Hey y'all, today we're building stools for the first time. Wasn't super confident on how to get this done, so I built a small test stool first to test the size and really design before then building two big stools for my dining room. After milling together some stock, I went ahead and cut the base of the legs at five degrees on each side so that when I stand them up next to each other, it would create a flat surface at the top, attempting to get flat feet in here as well. After cutting a few cross braces, I took them to the table saw to get them down to the right size. I'm having a lot more luck getting accurate 90 degree corners on my table saw than I am on my miter saw right now. I need to spend some more time getting it in line. Now I did go for pocket holes for this first stool. I thought I would be able to hide them uh, well enough in the design that they wouldn't really stand out. So we're gonna give it a go here. I don't want the cross piece to be all the way at the front. I want to have some dimension. So I put a little piece behind it as I'm putting it together here. And then to be sure the top sits flat, I had to shave off a bit of the cross piece here to make it flush with the tops of the boards. Now I thought I'd be able to put this together pretty easily, but for this last one I had to get a little creative. I had to get a flexible bit and an extension here to be able to fit it into this pocket hole gap. Now complete, I wanted to go ahead and finish this one off. So I cut out a seat top for this one out of some leftover cherry that I had. To make it nice and simple, we're just going to sand it down. We're going to chamfer the stool top, a nice coat of white paint for the stool and a clear stain for the top. I'd forgotten to chisel out some space for the brackets to connect the top to the stool base. So I chiseled that out and attached it. Overall, the design I like quite a bit, but those pocket holes are definitely noticeable. So for the real stools, we're making this out of walnut and we're gonna use dowels for the joinery instead of pocket holes. I repeated the same process except this time cutting out our placement for dowels. I made sure to mark the front and back of each of these. That way I could make sure I had this right reference face as I built this out. Now the first hole I drilled into the leg was of course in the wrong spot. So I had to cut a little plunge here and repair this before getting going. After getting the sides put together and a quick test fit, I went ahead and sanded everything down to 120 grit and then glued all the side pieces together. And you can see I've got my same five degrees on the feet and on the top. Now for the stretchers here, I want to be able to put it at kind of two different heights for the foot rests. That way, anyone who's sitting on it can have essentially a reversible situation. You can use it one side for shorter feet and the other side for longer feet. I went ahead and mocked the top together and then double checked my measurements here to make sure I had one a little higher and one a little lower before drilling those out. Now to assemble this and glue it together, the sides aren't parallel to each other. So I had to cut out little blocks with five degree cuts on them to be able to make a flat clamping surface. To make it easy, I put blue tape down the side and then used some uh, quick adhesive glue to be able to create these parallel surfaces for the clamps. And then when it's all done, it's just as simple as popping off the uh, 
little blocks and peeling away the tape. It really didn't leave many marks at all. Now for the seat tops. I had to put together some thick pieces of walnut here. And for the first time, I got out my new planer and am absolutely amazed at what a beast this thing is. You're going to see this show up in a lot more projects now that I've got the ability to mill down my own lumber to the right thickness. Now my wife wanted kind of saddle seat style uh, stool tops here. So after cutting it flush, I thought I could just take this to the sander and kind of sand out a saddle seat look to it. But even this belt sander with 60 grit paper wasn't getting the job done at all. So I ended up taking this over the table saw and just running slits down it in kind of a stair step fashion off the sides and then bringing it back to the sander to kind of sand it down into shape. Now to get it to sit flush, I did need a little bit of trimming on the top, uh, but these turned out great. Now to add my connectors to connect the seat to the stool itself. another sanding including rounding over these areas where your feet are going to end up resting I wanted to make sure those weren't sharp corners I added adjustable feet to the stools while I feel like I got a pretty good um, level base there uh, who knows how flat that floor is actually going to be now to finish it this is the first time I've ever used a hard wax oil I used Osmo for this one and it was pretty amazing it's easy to put on. The finish just shines through. Uh, it really is more, more dummy proof than a lot of the other stains or finishes I've used before. And after a quick assembly, the stools were done. These were a perfect addition for our kitchen, for my wife and I. And even this little test stool here we're using as a footstool in my office. If you like that, be sure and like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next project. Thanks.